my administration's support for Israel's security is rock solid and unwavering. I come to Israel with a single message. You're not alone. He's hurting Israel more than helping Israel. There's red lines that if he crosses in the country, he cannot have 30,000 more Palestinians dead. How is his support unwavering, but you're also reconsidering policy choices? Both can be true. They cannot be true. They're, they're completely different things. No, no, no. I just, is, I'm sorry. I, he I, is I, wavering. No, no, no. Come on. From unwavering support to issuing an ultimatum, President Biden's commitment to Israel, an open question at this hour as his Democratic base urges him to turn against the Jewish state and its war to defeat Hamas. Let's bring in Carl Rowe, former White House Deputy Chief of Staff and a Fox News contributor. Carl, good to see you on this Friday afternoon. We first had an inkling of all of this when President Biden was caught on an open mic at the State of the Union when he said this. Listen here. I told him. So he said he was going to have a come to Jesus meeting with Netanyahu, which appeared to occur yesterday over the telephone. And now there's an open question as to whether or not this president is potentially going to turn his back on our closest ally in the Middle East. What do you think, Carl? Well, I thought it was unusual that uh, in uh, undermining uh, our democratic ally in the region that he used the casualty numbers issued by Hamas. Uh, which have been widely discredited by our intelligence services and others as being completely inaccurate. So, yes, the president's under pressure. Uh, young voters and uh, uh, across the country are more likely to support uh, the Palestinians than they are uh, have been in the past. And then he's also obviously concerned about Michigan, uh, where a, a critical number of um, Arab American voters mm -hmm. are clustered around uh, the Detroit suburb of D Dearborn and. Uh, could uh, sink him in a battleground state. So there, there's also a question as to whether or not uh, the White House actually would turn its back on Israel. There's a lot of ambiguity in his statement. If there is a policy change, how far would it go? Yeah. Well, that's what's confusing because they've just uh, authorized a gigantic uh, and mm -hmm. appropriate, in my opinion, uh, a list of, of weapons to be supplied to Israel. Uh, particularly uh, to help guard against a, an attack on uh, from the north from Hezbollah, and so he simultaneously uh, joined them to uh, to uh, engage in an immediate ceasefire, and at the same time giving them the material that they might need, uh, that they would need in the event of an attack from the north. So, uh, look, th 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 this is the problem with with crises, foreign crises in election years, particularly when they involve a key constituency of the Democratic mm -hmm. Party. The Jewish vote is overwhelmingly Democrat, uh, and, and uh, so is the Arab American vote. And, and the president is, uh, in my opinion, playing too much politics and not enough statesmen with it. Uh, you know, as all of this unfolds, Carl, you had an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal in which you suggested that very small demographic changes in some of the battleground states could turn the results of the election. What are you thinking? Yeah. Yeah, look, uh, take a look at some of these numbers. I got too many whiteboards here for you, John, I, <laughs> I must admit. Uh, take a look at this. Democratic turnout. If you take a look, let's assume that everybody in Arizona votes the same as they did last time around. Mm -hmm. If the Hispanic or the young turnout, 18 to 29 year old voters, drops less than half a percent, that is to say, one out of every uh, 50 voters. Mm -hmm. Uh, says I'm not going to, or excuse me, one out of every 200 voters says I'm not going to turn out to vote in those populations. That sinks the Joe Biden victory margin in Arizona. If it is three tenths of one percent in Georgia, it sinks his victory margin. And then take a look at these registration numbers in Nevada. There are 33,000 more Democrats today than Republicans. That is down from 54,000. <laughs> Democrats from four years ago. And this is a state he won by 36, excuse me, 34,000 votes. So, you know, he, he's, he's in trouble in, in, in that state. In Pennsylvania, yeah. there are 399,000 more Democrats than Republicans. That might sound pretty good, but that is down 286,000 from four years ago, a 42 percent decline in, wow. the, in the registration margin for the Democrats. And he won Pennsylvania by 81,000, one fifth of this number. So uh, he's got some problems brewing in his in his uh, in, in in his coalition uh, in these battleground states. Now, now, admittedly, Donald Trump does have some challenges as well. Mm -hmm. 
But uh, the president's people are starting to awaken to the fact that they got a turnout, enthusiasm, and support problem uh, in, and, and structural problem in some of these battleground states. Yeah, we've seen a, a sharp increase in the number of African American voters who say they'll support Donald Trump. And now we've got Biden and his campaign going after Nikki Haley voters with this new ad. Watch here. She's gone crazy. She's a very angry person. She is not presidential timber. I don't need votes. We have all the votes we need. She is, she's gone haywire. There aren't that many never Trumpers anymore. How do you bring these Nikki Haley voters back into the town? I'm not sure we need too many. All right, so Biden Harris, Biden Harris actively going after those voters. Can they get them? I don't know. That's not enough. Uh, but but uh, policy probably matters. Time probably matters. But think about this. North Carolina primary was March 5th. Nikki Haley was still in the race. She got 250,000 votes in North Carolina. That is three times the number of votes that Donald Trump won North Carolina by four years ago. A week later, she's out. I mean, the next day she's out of the race. She says, I'm suspending mm -hmm. my campaign. And that's where he sort of makes these comments about her. And a week later, the Georgia primary is held on March 12th. She has 77,000 votes, and she's out of the race. And this is a state that he lost by, you know, just over 10,000 votes. This Tuesday, this Tuesday, she'd been out of the race for four weeks, 76,000 votes in Wisconsin, a state that, that, uh, that he lost by 20,000 votes last time around. And also this Tuesday, New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island, between one out of six and one out of every seven Republicans voted for her. So that's pretty significant, in other words. Carl Rove yep. with your Friday afternoon politics. Carl, great to see you. Have a terrific weekend. We'll see you next week. Thank you, John. You too. All right. Sandra? Good to see you, Carl. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern, or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.